I don't know who you are, but I do know what you need. I can tell you, I know some gentlemen with a very particular set of skills. Skills they have attained over a long career of studying tape and statistics. Skills they want to share to make you a nightmare for the rest of your league. Head over to www.ultimatedraftkit.com and order it right now. You will be prepared for your draft. Your league will be frightened of you. And you will kill them. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Saturday episode of the Saturday. show. Saturday. We are into July, which means three shows a week until we flip that dangerous switch to five a week starting in August through the end of the football season. Any, you know, special routines, preparation, uh, hydration. H. Related things that you do to get ready for five shows a week? Yeah. What did you say? H. Preparation H. Oh. oh. Yeah. So you're not yeah. quite in regular season form. Yeah. No. But, yeah. He's, he's I thought working you meant, up to it. I thought you meant HGH. Like you, you do a little human growth hom- hormone. I mean, hormone. I do that too. Hormone. Hormone. I do that too, but I also just make sure that things are taken care of. <laughs> right. I mean, you definitely yeah. want to make yeah, you, sure that's a lot of that sitting. you are prepared. Yeah. Yeah, do you know how much I'm on the couch in football season? Uh, let me let me show the the watchers of the show over here on YouTube how many people are sitting over in Deucer's Alley. <laughs> we got one. Yeah, we just got one bald guy. And um, look, do we want? Would we prefer a dude with hair producing the show? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, but we don't have that option today. We got Papa Josh in the building, and you know what? We'll take it. Yeah, that's fine. I do think that you bring up a really good idea for the show. A which wig? is to get uh, several wigs, <laughs> and then we pick what Papa Josh looks like for each oh, show. No. Maybe he could be a punk rock. Maybe oh. he's emo. Um, you know, I, I think we should. Wow, we should be in charge of capping Papa Josh. Papa Josh, have you ever considered to be a, a two pay man? No, nah, man. Dad, what happened you never when even you considered were, it? When you were losing it, did you have? Was this just like quick? All right, or was it like, oh no? It actually started in my like early to mid twenties, oh, and that's yeah. when I just went like, okay, well, I'm just going bald, so I'm gonna embrace it. Good for you, man. I mean, he has uh, his head; it's pretty good for the bald head. You know yeah. what I mean? Like some people, it's all right. Maybe it doesn't work out for. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna work well for me. I'm a hat guy. You've been wanting to be a bald guy for a while. <laughs> I just I'm not wanting, but um, knowing. Uh, we have a mailbag episode today, answering a ton of fantasy football questions to help you. Uh, set yourself up for the draft season. And guys, I know the off season edition of the hard knocks with the giants Mm -hmm. recently came out with their first episode. I enjoyed it very much. Tell me the takeaway that you shared with the foot clan (laughs) on the Footcast. Yes. So my number one takeaway was that this is a group of people that I could do this job (laughs) that, they, there is no secret. There is like it doesn't seem like there is any sort of extra education <laughs> that has gone <laughs> that they have gone through. I mean, they've been they've what, worked look, in the business. Couple things, but one, they, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, one, this is the Giants. Yeah. So let's not judge that against every okay, other team. That's fair. Two, yes, I was with you. I thought there might be a a different way that they would talk about players. Mm-hmm. And you made this point when we were talking about this earlier. They don't. They talk the same way we talk. It was like, I mean, it might have been, it might as well have been an episode of the show where it was like, well, you know, if they don't, they don't keep Barkley. Like Devin Singletary's out there, and Joe Mixon's out there, and Josh Jacobs is out there. Like we can find a guy. Yep. I mean, they, that's how I manage my team. And they broke everything down, talking about the value of what their expected salary will be if they hit the free market. Uh, you had. 
the decision of, okay, well, we're going to let Saquon test free agency. And then you had the, the director of player personnel is like, well, what's – What's the identity of our team then? And you're like, yeah, how are we going to score on offense? Is literally like <laughs> one of the things they said. So it was, I enjoyed it. It made me very hopeful because the thing I want the most is draft footage. I want to be in the war room while decisions are being made. Like, do they, like when, when we get to it, is it all, they're just sitting there looking at Malik neighbors. It, like it just counting down the, the draft slots until they're up to the get him. Or is it really a, okay, J.J. McCarthy is here. We could reboot our quarterback or, you know what I mean? Like, Because that, that will change, I guess, a little bit how you think about players. But it's also just so fun to actually get inside of of all that scheming and planning. It, is, it was really interesting to watch. It parallels a lot of the way we talk about players and breaks, break things down in a subjective way unpredictable sport where you're an expert only so much as you, nobody as, knows what's going to happen. Just as much as you guess right. Correct. That's, that's all it is. It's like, I, I think that these teams, they all film the entire process of these drafts and they can't wait for one of the drafts to go perfect and then they'll release the footage. You know, it's like <laughs> They're waiting for one of these teams to get a perfect draft and then they'll be like, look how it happened. Well, I mean, they're all perfect right now. Well, that's yeah. the the comment and that'll be your but, but situation. now now is why it's really hard to release the tape because it you could be excited you about don't want this it player on record and then like next year you're like oh man we we showed how excited we were for this this bum yeah, it was funny because there was a just a small clip where they were it, some guys in the office talking about the super bowl and it's who you got i'm like oh who's the dummy who's the dummy who got this one wrong yeah yeah i mean because we are quick to find the footage yeah i mean i i just saw I think it was uh, Colin Coward. They found the clip of him talking about how LeBron, like when Ben Simmons got drafted and how like LeBron can go now. The, like I didn't feel this way about Magic. I didn't feel this way about Bird or whoever he said. He goes, Ben Simmons is the future of the NBA and LeBron, you can go away now. <laughs> that is what a do you think? take. That's a, that's a take. Wow. Uh, obviously, <laughs> thankfully, you're listening to this podcast and we have – so far, ten years, we haven't really missed. Yeah, we we get it all right. Uh, <laughs> we 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 guess right, um, and we've never we've is, never whiffed. If you get it right every time, is it a guess? Good, mm. good point. We answer facts. Speaking of which, uh, look, the Ultimate Draft Kit, the Draft Analyzer, available right now. UltimateDraftKit.com. If you get the UDK Plus, you can go import your team, get a draft grade, get a breakdown every position, where you're strong, where you're weak. Uh, our favorite players will even tell you which of the three of us your team aligns with more philosophically, uh, which is always funny when we draft teams and then we put it in there and it's like, in uh, most of the time it is like a team that is reflected. It's like Andy likes your team the most. Yeah. I'm like, thank goodness. But occasionally it'll be one of the other ones and yep. you're like, that feels it, weird. I didn't mean to draft a Jason team. You, yeah. my, we just did the mock and mine was an Andy team. Good job. You're finally making the changes you needed to make. That's I'm probably so, why it was a B plus. So, so proud of you. And not an A. Oh, it was just a B plus. I'm a B plus <laughs> guy. That's pretty much what my high school stuff was. Like, if I got a B plus, that was fine. I mean, you'd be happy with that, right? Yeah. yeah I'd good. be happy with that because I didn't do any homework. If you go through life t with too high a grade, everyone's looking at you. Too low, can't do nothing. B plus. Aim for the sky. <laughs> no, it's just Not under. Not the stars. No, yeah. aim for the sky. Okay. Uh, quick question from YouTube. Which rookie wide receiver will be the best return on investment this year? And and part of this question is because maybe the listeners don't realize this. <clears throat> Malik Neighbors, currently, his current average draft position is the highest ever for any rookie wide receiver. Ever. Of all time. No one has ever been drafted as high as Malik Neighbors. And it doesn't even feel remotely high. Because Which is to explain where it is. Yeah, he's he's at the four oh two right now as the wide receiver twenty. That's Malik Neighbors. And that's like I mean, that's left for dead because <laughs> Marvin Harrison Jr. is going at the end of the first, the top of the second. He's at the two oh one right now as the ninth wide receiver selected. So I mean he's obliterating the highest ever drafted rookie. But there's a lot of rookie wide receivers in this draft class. This was supposed to be a really deep uh, class, so it's like okay, if you don't draft either the highest or the other highest uh, ever drafted rookie, 
what rookie wide receivers are worthy of their ADP right now. It's funny because I think Marvin Harrison's a fair answer for this question. I, I genuinely do. Like I think, I mean, I guess the question is best return best on returns. investment. So maybe not, but I think he, he will return on the investment. It's probably not the best return. He would have, you have to, to jump up. Like I mean, he would have to finish. He'd no, you're right. Drafted at the wide wide receiver nine. So for you're a, right, he would have to jump up into almost top five. But but just to lay out where the other ADPs are: Roma Dunze in the late sixth, Xavier Worthy in the seventh, Lad McConkey in the eighth, Brian Thomas in the eleventh, Keon Coleman in the ninth. Those two are my answer. The Brian Thomas and Keon Coleman, they're almost right next to each other, end of the eighth, early ninth. I think both of those players uh, are in contention for me. I like Brian Thomas a ton, and I think Keon Coleman just has it. Keon Coleman has like a Marvin Harrison Jr. light situation going for him. Harrison is being drafted where he's being drafted because elite quarterback playing Kyler Murray and no one on the depth chart. Buffalo has no one on the depth chart and Josh Allen. And yet, Marvin's a second-round pick at the top of the second or the late first. Keanu Coleman's a ninth-round pick. Yeah, so, to me, that, that gives you an opportunity. The, the the opportunity is there for Coleman to get on the field and, and make a difference. He has not yet capitalized it. If you're, if you're reading the reports and how he's coming along, there's a lot to learn. We hope he can learn this position or that position. He's going to need to earn his way on the field. My answer for this question is, is another one where you, you know you talk about oh it's it's a Marvin Harrison light situation this the same thing with Lad McConkey Lad McConkey finds his way to being the number one wide receiver I believe for uh you know a great you know Justin Herbert is a fantastic quarterback so Lad McConkey is sitting there as the wide receiver forty one in drafts right now can you imagine Justin Herbert I know they're going to run the ball more but can you imagine Justin Herbert's number one wide receiver and maybe it's not Lad. Maybe huge Quentin Johnston steps up, or maybe Joshua Palmer is better than we think. But whoever it is, I can't fathom them being wide receiver 41 or under. The first 14 weeks, and obviously Keenan Allen is, is, is a goat, uh, but the first 14 weeks last year, he was the wide receiver three. It went Tyreek Hill, CeeDee Lamb, and then Keenan Allen, yeah, and then I he mean, got injured. If you had drafted an outside wide receiver to the Chargers and it was a pass from the offense, I think we'd be having a different conversation. But the, I mean, Lad McConkey being a slot receiver, like Keenan, yeah, but that's not a good that's not a good one for me. Like get a, a all timer slot wide receiver comparison with Lad McConkey, unproven rookie, is not a fair comparison. I, I think what I because we've love, been here before. We've well, been here with Wes Welker. Oh my gosh, it's this guy. It's this guy. It's good. No, it wasn't. It was none of them in New England. Nobody replaces elite. Julian Edelman did. No, it took it, not really. It took time, and it wasn't the same situation. Yeah, the the great part about drafting Lad McConkey, in my opinion, is that he is awesome. Like that's he, his film is great. I think he is a talented wide receiver, and the reports, like unlike Coleman, they're talking about he's got a lot to learn. Yeah, he's got to he's got to pick it up. Lad, they're literally saying he understands the playbook already. He knows it. He's he's the number one target in most practices that have been open to reporters. And so I, I, I think he's going to be the one, you know, really early in his career. And, you know, me and you, we love Ladd co coming out. I think the player is going to be better for the team than the production. That's yeah. I don't like to say that. No, I would I, love to be back in the bandwagon. I just have a hesitancy, and I hope I'm proven wrong. I get it because, you know, you you know Hunter Renfro is a really good wide receiver, and even yes. though he had one, yes. he, he actually finished as a wide receiver one once. Uh, I think the wide receiver 12 a couple years ago, that wasn't, his normal because the role that Ladd will probably find himself in isn't usually the one that you dominate for fantasy, but you certainly are above the wide receiver 41. I think he'll return on his ADP. That seems fair. Uh, Mike, what about you? So for me, it's it's between Ladd and Brian Thomas because I think that they can, they at least have the opportunity to become the number one on their team. Like where Xavier Worthy you know, drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs in the first round, if if he hits, his ceiling will be higher than those other two guys just because of of what he would mean to the Kansas City Chiefs offense if they can find their way back to really getting the ball down the field. But Ladd's path is easy, and Brian Thomas, I love, look, Christian Kirk is a great wide receiver, but in terms of talking just actual ceiling if it's hit, Brian Thomas, I 
could take over. I'm not projecting it, so I lean lad in, in for this conversation. But Brian Thomas would be my second pick. Um, okay, and are you not as you're not as you're more hesitant about Keon Coleman? I am. I I think I really think that Curtis Samuel will end up being the number one wide receiver. And like, uh, and it's it's what is how does Dalton Kincaid factor into everything? So I th I think that Coleman has a ways to go. All right, we're going to take a quick break and come back with your mailbag questions. Uh, just to put a ball on the like rookie wide receiver discussion or, or maybe extend it momentarily, it is interesting to look back at whether it was Chase, um, you know, Brandon Cooks, uh, Amari Cooper. Like, there haven't been a lot of rookies drafted highly. But there have been mistakes made by the fantasy community in not doing so, right? Like the Jamar Chase discussion was a, is a really, really big one, right? High draft capital, you know, question marks around the, the limited information we have in the offseason. He drops a pass in camp. Mm -hmm. The world is falling apart. And within about four seconds at the, you know, when the season started, it was like, oh, no, why did he go? <laughs> why was he a six-round pick and, and not a first-round pick? Marvin Harrison's ADP to me is a – direct result of the fantasy community saying, well, I'm, I'm going to learn my lesson on Jamar, but then you you keep drafting him higher. And then it's like, well, no, I learned my lesson. I learned it way better than you, so I'm going to take him even earlier. And now, Marvin, as confident as I am in him, that ADP is – it still is scary. Marvin Mar Harrison cannot fail. Marvin Harrison – He cannot. Marvin Harrison will not fail and cannot fail and can absolutely be a disappointment at his current draft cost. Fair. He's going to be a great rookie wide receiver. He's going to be the number one for the Cardinals, and he's very talented. This is not going to be a guy who has a bust of a career. However, if you it, had to, it, I think his line right now on on most sports books is about a thousand receiving yards. It's like uh, I haven't looked in a in a long time, but um, like a month ago, it was like a thousand point five was his line. I mean, ten fifty. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's gone up to ten fifty. I mean, if he finishes the season with 1050 and you're drafting him at the one two turn, that's that's a right. great rookie mm -hmm. season, and you're going to be really down on his fantasy production. Yeah, it's um, it it'll be interesting in Arizona. That puts him at wide receiver nine, by the way, on the draft board. And um, if you were putting down all your money on one side of wide receiver nine or the other, I'd put it on the under. You'd put it on the under. Yeah, yeah. even with injury insurance. What do you mean with injury? Oh, I'm just saying you don't get you don't no. get screwed out of your money with injury. It's just production. Yeah, I'll take I'll take the the over on a thousand yards and the under on being a wide receiver nine or better. I would bet that he'll be better, but it'll be fun to watch. Now, Neighbors is the wide receiver twenty. Odunze wide receiver thirty two, and those three guys. I'm going to put them all in the same group: McConkey, Brian Thomas, and Coleman. All have opportunities from the jump. Like all three of those guys from the first week of the season. Like I think it's unlikely you end up just saying, "Yeah, that's a eighth round pick in fantasy." Like you probably know something more about them. It's just the gamble, um, or how much time it takes. But rookie wide receivers with opportunity, you you see flashes right away. Do you think Adonai Mitchell is is interesting too? In the late tenth, with the opportunity he'll have, you guys are. I think every 15 minutes your watch goes off, you have to say something nice about Anthony Richardson. I just drafted him again. Yeah, I'm sure. Right nice. now. Nice. That's been the most popular thing I've seen right now in fantasy is to tweet about how high you think Anthony Richardson will finish. It's like, yeah. I can beat you. He's top three. Nah, he's top two. He's number one. He's going to be the number one <laughs> fantasy guy. Still feel the same yeah. confidence with him. Uh, Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm... Uh, Happy to have him as my sole and only quarterback going into the season. I'm extremely confident that he will be great for fantasy football. Is there a world, real quick on Lad McConkey? is there a world where you think that in two wide receiver sets he can push Quentin Johnston off the field? I don't think so. Probably not. It's probably going to be Palmer. Yeah, that's what I like. Palmer right now Hughes. it would be in two wide – Palmer well, Chark and, is there too, so I don't think there's any chance McConkey's getting outside. Okay, and the, and and it, it's a good thing to bring up because you would anticipate that they will have a lot of two wide receiver sets with the yeah. new high T 
methodology coming over. All right, let's jump into the mailbag. 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 All right, if you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. A lot of great off-season articles coming out right now by a uh, newly uh, reinforced writing staff. Yeah. So shout-out to all the brand-new writers on the writing staff. It's like a fresh dollar bill, like newly minted. It's just you get it, yeah. and you're like, oof. Smells like the vault. Yeah. The uh, We have our annual Path to a Wide Receiver 1 series that ha that's rolling out. Highly recommend it. Any of you have the grandparents that always gave you the card with the fresh bills in it? I had a great aunt that always gave me a $2 bill. Hmm. You still have them? No. Ice cream <laughs> ice cream truck rolled by. <laughs> That's a true story, and, man. And the, and the guy who took your money didn't say, now, kid, this is a $2 bill that in the future is going to be worth way more than $2. I bought my street. I thought I had other money, and I, I remember and I this didn't. story. Oh, no. And I bought my street this stuff, and and I had to grab the two dollar bills from my bottom sock drawer and pay for the oh, ice cream. For it. And you then I a went, round of ice cream for the street, you, and then I went inside and I broke down crying because it was like, "What have I done?" And I think my parents caught him at the end of the street and saved him and saved him. Oh, yeah. All right. If you have a question for the show, go to the website thefantasyfootballers.com. Click that submit a question button. Or you can dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Here we go. Yo, what up, fantasy footballers? This is Brian from San Diego. My question is, what is your overall opinion of three wide receiver full PPR leagues? Thanks, guys. Love the show. I think it's a great format. Well, it's not, not so my preference. Full, full opinion on leagues where you start three wide receivers and it's full PPR. Uh, draft wide receivers. Yeah, this, I mean, this is the perfect format for a zero RB or a hero RB because you're really – with with three wide and you probably have at least a flex, you want those things jam-packed with as many elite wide receivers as you can get. The reason I love half PPR is because usually when you're – let's say it's two wide receiver, two running back, and a flex. The flex is pretty much equal for most situations between a running back and a – and a wide receiver. The when you get to like the the running back twenty five, the wide receiver twenty five, and half PPR, they're near each other. When you switch to full PPR, it's not. It's all. It should almost. It should usually be a wide receiver that's going to be in that slot. Now, if your roster starts three wide receivers plus that flex, you just load up on wide receivers. Yeah, I mean, I think the format's fine as well. I mean, I've seen some criticism when we've done mock draft episodes that we're not doing like 50 wide receivers and 30 flexes. I would And drafting with like not like that. Everybody in the studio live like I I don't think you guys understand how the show would go <laughs> if you had nine other individuals having to think about and then make a draft pick. Uh we have done it with the Deucers before. I'm sure we'll do another one with them involved where they're present, where we can badger them into making the pick quickly. Yeah, the problem there is, you know, the, you don't want to to do mock drafts on this show where one person has no idea what they're doing. You know what I mean? And and, and right. just making the most right. egregious picks. Yep. And so when the when the deucers come in, I mean, it's just like that's the problem. That's the problem. I see. You turned it on to them really yeah. quick. Yes, I did. Um, drive but, that, drive that bus. But yeah, I mean, three wide receiver, uh, multi. I mean, our main league of record is a double flex league. So, um, ha if you want an extra position or two in that lineup, you want to kick out the kickers and defenses while you uh, massage that into place. We're all in favor of that. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's a more entertaining, fun league is to get rid of the kicker position and put in another flex. Like that's what we did. Um, yeah, I would rather play in a two wide receiver, two running back, two flex than three wide receiver, two running back. In a flex. Now, there is one unspoken, you know, we haven't mentioned it, one big benefit of the full PPR league. Do you remember? Oh, it's actually a legit one, too. Yeah, when you're watching games, mm. anytime your dude catches the ball, point. You just scream, point. point. Yeah. yeah. It's, and you can point while you do it. I recommend it. It's, it is it is invigorating. <laughs> Instagram question from Ethan. Would you rather have Kyler Murray or Justin Herbert in a dynasty league? Uh, it looks like Yoinks. our dynasty rankings are in the UDK plus. You can go see them right now. These guys are back to back for myself. And I believe and me, Mike, it is not as close for Jason, but that is simply because he has Kyler even higher. 
I I'm on the Kyler side. Jason, you're on the Kyler side. Yeah, I I, I love mobile rushing quarterbacks, and there's very few guys that can rush for 600 yards and pass for 4,000 yards. When those two things happen in the same season, you break fantasy. Um, you know, Kyler is still young. Both these guys are young. Yeah, age is not a factor. They're the same. Yeah, and so and both are good quarterbacks. But for fantasy football purposes, I'm going to take the mobile rushing guy. Yeah, yeah. They, if you had to put money on who has a top three season over the next three years, I think it's on Kyler. Yeah. Uh, just because of the – what would have to happen for Herbert is so outlier that, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, it's just more likely for Murray. Like, Herbert has to throw 40-plus touchdowns. Yeah. Right? Um, And that, that to get into that mix, and Kyler just – he just doesn't have to do that. I, I mean, obviously, we have seen it with Herbert – once before he, he was the the quarterback two in his sophomore season when he did throw for 38 touchdowns uh ran for three more so over 40 total touchdowns that's what it's gonna take for him to do it you don't anticipate that happening when you lose Keenan uh, you lose Mike Williams and then you go high T run the ball mode all right let's jump into another voicemail question here what's going on ballers this is Chance from Wilmington North Carolina this is a two-parter should I be trying to move Tank Dell to see what I can get? And also, why doesn't Jason switch to turkey dogs? They're just as delicious. They might split and burn when you get them on the grill, but they're just as good. Let me know. Thanks. Goodbye. Okay. okay. Yeah, so there's a lot, lot to unpack. A lot to unpack here. Number Chance from Wilmington. Wilmington, be careful. But, I mean, if we're in agreement that that was Casey Kasem. Oh, Maybe. That this might. is Casey Kasem. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was frightening. The top 40 American hits. Look, I think that this question is actually really well laid out because the, – Which part? The trading, turkey dogs? Trading the... Tank Dell right now is akin to switching to turkey dogs. It's just stupid. It's just <laughs> it's just not what you want to do. Okay. So um, Tank Dell right now is the – an average draft – price which is really what you're going to be it's a great uh marker for how people are valued right now obviously that's that's where they're being drafted right now tank dell is the third of the three texans wide receivers so you know if you're trying to shop him around i don't know that he's going to get the bring you the haul i personally think he's going to be the number one target on the uh texans this coming season so i i just don't feel like you're trading high and, and then switching to turkey dogs my, my he means man, number one behind nico yeah, I was just, I mean, in saying, targets behind Nico. No, that's no, a, I, I'm just joking. that's a real turkey joking. dog opinion. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that our new thing? So yeah, just I, like, at I least mean, for this question, turkey dogging is, uh, I mean, that's a phrase to describe doing kind of like not the best thing, but like an alternative. Have you worse. ever had a turkey dog? Yeah, I've had a turkey dog. I've had a turkey burger. I've had a turkey burger. I don't think I've had a turkey. Yeah, dog. you know what? Tur turkey burger. <laughs> turkey. Burgering is also oh, it's not a good idea. Akin to the same thing. Yeah, and the reason why it, it's I'm, settling for an inferior alternate. It can, yeah, it can work, maybe for your long term health, but nothing else. Yeah, I mean, look, if you put a burger, two burgers right there in yeah. front of me, and one of these is a nice ground chuck, and the other is a turkey, <laughs> you're not fooling me. You know, you know what I mean? I'm not going to go one, ahead, we, blindfold away. One bite of each, and you will clearly know yeah, where you're we need ending to set the meal. This up. It's like the Pepsi challenge. Oh, if Jason accidentally didn't pick. Yeah. Impossible. It would be impossible. He, he says impossible. we got to make this happen. It's if it turkey wasn't impossible. Maybe if you had was, him. <laughs> I was going to say, if it wasn't impossible, he'd be eating turkey burgers. Now, I will have to plug your nose and blindfold you. No, you can't plug the nose. No, that's now, part of taste. Now Brooks is weighing in. He says turkey taco meat is good too. No, it's not. What? Well, I will say this in his defense: turkey taco meat is much. It is. You can get closer because I don't know if you guys personally cook your taco meat. I do. Uh, I usually. It takes. I mean, you. I don't, don't eat it raw. <laughs> no, I don't mean that's it. what I thought we were talking no, about. No, I'm saying like. When you make, make tacos at home, are you the one? Are you are the chef? Are you the chef? Because, I mean, you take those taco packets, those seasonings. Yeah. It's one packet per pound, and when you put that packet on there, you're like, oh my lanta, yeah, there's meat's a, gone. Yeah, there's so much seasoning. So it's like, okay, if you're if you're putting that much seasoning on turkey, you know, gussy it up. Did we settle the questions there? I think in, we did. At hand, okay. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, let's go ahead and go to a YouTube question. When did you decide to use uh, to draft using your gut when, as opposed when do you? Yeah. Oh, goodness. I thought he was making an accusation. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was saying, why'd you switch to your gut? Um, when do you decide to draft using your gut as opposed to sticking to your rankings? When I'm on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> um, example that he's giving uh, or that, that we have here is that, like, you know, Hopkins and Brian Thomas are back-to-back -back in ranks. Brian Thomas is going to be the more, like, emotionally satisfying selection for a lot of people, myself included. Um, and it's also what, what – who do you think has the most upside at that point? Upside versus risk versus what your team but you needs. Might, yeah, you might not need upside. I mean, that that's the other part. You might need Hopkins. You might need guaranteed right. targets and starts. Um, but you – depending on the previous picks in your draft – I start going with my gut when it's obviously close in the rankings and sometimes it's fandom and emotional. Like I, I would rather root for Brian Thomas Jr. to have a breakout season than I would rather root for Hopkins to hold on to his career for another year, um, clawing his way to targets. I mean, that's how I mean, that's how I would look at it. Yeah, I don't know that you would call it your gut. You're not always going to take people based on rankings. We don't do it. Um, I've never gone through a single draft in my life where I just take the highest person in my linear rankings because you're going to look at your team makeup if, if you need, you know, That's a good cons point. Consistency. It's not, that doesn't make it gut to make a different call than the ranking. Right. You're, you're taking all the logic in. There is a time when I switch to my gut, and that's like double-digit rounds. That's <laughs> when I just go like, I like that dude. <laughs> you know, I'm just like right. that's that's where I do that. But for the most part, um, you you just got to bring in as much logic as you can and draft by tiers. That's why we tier guys in the UDK. Um, that way you could you could take a look at all the guys. They might be in the same tier. That doesn't mean that they have the same style of total fantasy finish. Two guys in the same tier, they could both finish at the exact same you know wide receiver number at the end of the year and very different archetypes that fit different rosters. All right, uh, Instagram question from Impotsi says, how long is too long to be waiting on a response to a trade offer <laughs> that you have sent? Andy has uh, – Andy, why don't you have the floor because I know you're struggling with this right now. I have had a trade sent over to another manager in our Dynasty League. Are they listening right now? It's not, they it's not me, is it? No, it, it's – Mike's literally checking to make sure it's not him. I am. <laughs> It's been sitting there for over a week. I had to click the modify button, and then I resent it so it would pop up in our chat more recently. How long is too long? Look, there is no there, there's no answer. If it's a trade you want to have happen, there's no too there's not a too long. You're willing to wait and pay. Like I could go in there and negotiate against myself, right? Because that's what you'd be doing if I go in there and I modify. Like I know the person's thinking about it. I know that they've they have at least yes. accepted. They've acknowledged, acknowledged that they've acknowledged they've been thinking about it. I don't know how they have this kind of patience. I do not have it myself. If I see a trade that I'm thinking about doing, I'm either excited to click that button or I'm shutting it down or I'm at a minimum sending a counter. None of that has happened. This person is just like, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I'm still thinking about it. And I want it to go through. So I'm willing to wait. And if I modify it now, I'm negotiating against myself and just trying to because then you end up in a bad situation. If I go offer a slight tweak right now to try to push it through, mm -hmm. guess who sends over a slight tweak to the tweak? They'll send one back with even more giving on my side. Sure. And who would that be? One of the guys in our league. Ah, come on. Name uh, names. The, you do have to factor in, like, when there are times, unfortunately, in my life where someone asks me a question and I say, I'll think about it. And I'm just, I'm lying to you because I'm not going to think about it. Hmm. I'm going to hopefully think about it later, but then I forget, and you just so it's more of a a, a nice reminder. I think every couple of days, because also like I miss notifications. I've, I've you're saying you need the reminder. Yes, and like to me, if if you go a couple of days and then it's sent a reminder, I don't think that's rude at all because people's lives are crazy. People's digital lives are crazy. I've gone in uh, to to DM somebody. And they had set a 24-hour expiring offer. I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm I'm sorry. I wasn't ignoring you. I literally just didn't see this. Yeah, it's totally normal. I'll, I, 
if I if I send a trade offer to someone, I'm usually going to poke them as well in a DM and and let them know. If I don't hear something for a couple of days, I'll hit them up again. Yeah, and and you can't uh, like Brooks has talked about this before. He gets annoyed if someone tries to over explain why it's good for them. You don't need to do that. My my strategy is keep it light. If I know somebody's teetering, I might send you some fun gifts. I might try to encu- yeah. I might try to encourage you. Let's have a good time together. You know what I mean? Me, yeah. you, and this oh. trade. Let's have a party. I love sending a let's make a deal gift. Yeah. And if you have like a, a massive fantasy football show, talk up the guys on that show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Help get that deal done. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Who, who should we talk up? Yeah, who are we talking well, about? I mean, Andy? I think we all agree Tyler Lockett's in for a career year. Oh, my goodness. What a bounce back. Can't, wow. bounce can't drop back that guy. New money. <laughs> New money. That's all you're getting, Jay. Cause, you know, I would tell you, there's a time in my life I would have told you the details of these trades. But ever since the great scarring mm-hmm. that transpired when Mike, when I decided to, to yeah. trust in Mike and tell him about Calvin Johnson years ago. Ever since. That was like that was like That was a very long time ago. ago. You should probably get over it. No, no, no. It's not about getting over it. It's a lesson learned. It's not like, I mean, like if I decide to drive on the train tracks and then a, and then a train hits me, like 15 years later, I don't go, you know what? It's time to drive on the tracks again. Yeah, it is. Is it's it? A, yeah, yeah, it's oh, been yeah. 15 years. Yeah. No, man. there's there's so those tracks are Those tracks are abandoned, man. There's, there's no, no train coming down. Yeah, you're fine. Get on them there's tracks. No chance you're of scared telling of ghosts. either of you. Yeah, I'm scared of ghosts. <laughs> I'm scared of ghost trains. I'm not telling either of you what's going on. Just who's the player you're trying to acquire? And last year, I got burned <laughs> on a trade already. Papa Josh, the bald son of a... <laughs> I mean, no, no, okay. I'm not. I want love to tell you. I'd love to have a friend, but you want love to. So it's Jordan Love. Oh, good. Yes, I'm speaking in code. Um, all right, let's take a break. Compose ourselves. I'll check the train tracks out. We'll be back in a second. Also, uh huh. Don't go on the train. Don't don't drive on train tracks, people. No, do we have the old? Uh, no, we have, don't do it. Okay, we. This is the one. hype yeah. train now. For those who don't know, this is the hype train, and it's just a, a toy train. But we once had a much louder train. It was awesome, and it was much scarier. And I and people were really afraid on the road when they listened to this show, and we had to. It's so funny to me though, because not that like, we would accept responsibility. Like uh, obviously, putting like a siren. Yeah, in, in that's unacceptable. If you're a musician and you put, you know, a police siren in your song, shame on you because that's terrifying every time. But like, if I'm just driving down the road and I hear but a train, we're, we're not I, really a train culture over here, Jay. There's a lot of trains around the United States. But my point is, if you're not near tracks, if anywhere, anywhere you're in the country, if you're not near afraid? tracks, you shouldn't be afraid that. Oh my gosh, there's a train coming in the middle of downtown. I don't think that's how long the thought process works. No, when, you're just when startled. Prim, when yeah. primal fear says you need to escape, you're like, well, of course I'm fine. There's no trains around me. All right, kick kick off. <laughs> 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 and then the train just smashes the train out of you. nowhere. <laughs> falls off of a, off a of flatbed <laughs> next to you. Heck yeah. All right, YouTube question. With the addition of the new kickoff rules, what players oh, that are man. currently being drafted could realistically see their increases, see an increase in their yearly touchdown totals because of the return TDs, um, which you know the new uh, the new kickoff system system is unique. It mimics what the XFL was doing. Um, it's like a hybrid kickoff where the offensive and defensive uh, blockers uh, begin five yards apart at the. Th- I think it's like the 40 and the uh, 35 yard line. And you have, you know, you're incentivized at this point to kick to the receiver, to the kick re- returner instead of going into the end zone. So um, the return rate in the XFL was 97%. Last year in the NFL, it was 22%. And you're going to have some of these guys house it for touchdowns. When you when you get that many opportunities and the 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 methodology for, uh, coverage, you might be scoring a few extra special teams touchdowns, but I, I don't have like a a very in depth list of guys that I know are confirmed going to you know like well they're gonna try some new people yeah and then Pat Thorman put a list out of some names oh did he that returned kicks last year that could be relevant and one of them's a sleeper that I took at the last pick of my draft 
Rashid Shahid yeah. is an option with the speed. Uh, Greg Dortch did it. Marvin Mims did it. Antonio Gibson will probably do it. Um, I, Damian Pierce did it a little bit, and that was a way to work into the lineup. Marvin Mims and if Tajay Spears keeps returning, that which is that's a big question. Uh, those to me are the two that I think. What about Debo? Be the most. I mean, I can't. He imagine. Returns, he's he done returned a kicks time. from week thirteen on last year, but they probably won't do it again. I don't think they will. I doubt they do. I you might see. I don't know, man. You might see some rookies also able to. You know, the Malachi Corleys. Why? Um, why not do it though? In, well, uh, this was my this is the readjustment now, of our brains. Yes. Now, yes, like I feel like of all the teams to do it, San Francisco would be the one to do it before anybody else. It's like your injury risk is not turned up, and you're telling me you want, you know, a different guy returning the kick than Debo Samuel on a play that's not going to get you any more hurt. Yeah, I that's guess, uh, that's yeah. the weird logic thing where it's like I you could see some players. It's going to be incidental. I'm not drafting based off of it. But you could have some of your players incidentally become kick returners. I think that could happen. Yeah, I mean, halfway through the season, you could see Tyreek just like sure demanding, "I want, I want that opportunity." But what does that really equate to, too? You know, well, let's say most, the best player does it. Is it two kickoff returns for touchdown? Most fantasy leagues, this is completely irrelevant for. I, I think by default, uh, even the touchdowns on special teams don't count, and then uh, almost all leagues don't have return yardage now if you're in a return yardage league those those are out that there. matters yeah oh that'd Holy be huge moly. marvin mims might be a player yeah. in a league like that jalen hyatt so i mean i'm sure. looking at 2023's kickoff returns on nfl.com like the guys who had the most we're talking uh the high at 30 and then all the way down through you know it would, let's just cut off at 10 and this is it's last year, so every, we have to, we do have to readjust. But it's like last year, the we, Marvin Mims had one. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, you haven't had a. Um, I don't think it's going to get out of control. You haven't had like four is the record, and there's only two players that have done that, and it was all before 1970. And so then you have a handful of players with three. Josh Cribbs, if you remember him, he was fun to watch. Yeah. He had three in one season. Otherwise, you're talking about if it's touchdown only, one or two is the difference of the entire season. Mm-hmm. It'll be fun, though. It will yes. be fun yeah, yeah. Very to exciting. care about that. I am so excited to go from commercial to something I care about to commercial instead of commercial to kick off through the back of the end zone to commercial. Mm -hmm. um, but there are leagues like the Scotty Fishbowl that are really skewed towards those return yardage type yes. of situations, which will be, you know, that'll be exciting. I'm not opposed to adding that as return a variable. Yards. No, I'm not. Sure. Not if these are fun. If these are a fun part of football, I'm not opposed to like after we see what happens this season. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying like and it, you might not have to do a lot. You could you could super nerf it. It could be a quarter of what like a normal situation is, but at least it's something. There's a little bonus for plays that yeah, make I don't a want, difference. Yeah, I don't want Rashid Jaheed to become the wide receiver one in fantasy. But if you gave him a little bit of a boost, that'd be cool. Um, it's speaking of things, do you look at oh, them man, for do drafts? You guys, do you guys remember when Antonio Brown was the returner and the best wide receiver in the league? Though, if you if you had a return yardage league, it was like it was over if you had Antonio. That's true. Yeah. And punt returning. The uh, I believe he had the most kicks to uh, kicks to face. I was gonna say that might have been where it started to turn for him when he kicked uh, Cleveland's kicker in the head. That was awesome. <laughs> I mean objectively awesome like <laughs> quite the reaction you know it was, it's not premeditated you didn't no. know you're gonna but your first thought was like i'm gonna jump and kick you no he, i he think was, his, i think he was trying to hurdle his first the guy. thought was i'm gonna jump over this guy and the second <laughs> thought was i'm not gonna make it so what do i do and instead of like a tuck protect it was <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> just a jump it's like a bicycle <laughs> kick to the face that All right, good. do you consider bye weeks? Uh, we have an Instagram question about it. Would you fade a pick if they share a bye week with other players on your team? No. In best ball, I will because you're not going to make transactions. I'll look. If I think I'm grabbing two quarterbacks, I'm obviously not going to grab both of them with the same bye week. Um, but in redraft in my home leagues, I don't, I, don't, I don't even truly use it as a tiebreaker. Grant in Alabama with our final question here, and we may have some debate on it. But without Jason Kelsey, is there reason to worry about J Jalen Hurts? I want to say no. I really want to say no. 
I'm excited about Jalen Hurts' season because I think that their offensive coordinator uh, shift that they tried last year was not good enough. They have an extremely talented roster. Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown might be the two best wide receiver you know, combos in the league. And they started last year on fire. A.J. Brown was amazing. Jalen Hurts was amazing. The Eagles were nearly undefeated. I think they had one loss going into the bye week in week nine. And then the NFL figured them out. They didn't have pre-stamp motion. They, they were just such a predictable vanilla offense that, you know, was, then they got shut down, lost most of the games uh, straight into the playoffs, you know, one and done in the playoffs. So I am excited to see uh, the Kellen Moore offense with the talent here. But there are – But, I mean, that the Jason Kelsey thing specifically, tush-push implications. It's Kelsey plus Barkley that scares me. Because if the tush push gets a little bit worse, which we won't know for sure until they try it out, but if it gets a little bit worse and you've got a, another really good option with Barkley, you start converting some of those, it's going to make a huge impact. I mean, this is a guy who had 15 rushing touchdowns because of the tush push. It's it's also it's not just the tush push. I'll start with concerned, no, but it it, it is a conversation. Like It's not something that should just be completely – thrown away ah don't worry about it we have seen offensive lines improve dramatically like overnight because they add a true superstar at the center position it's a it's a really important position to the offensive line helping out quarterbacks identifying things you know calling out blitzes making sure like helping the quarterback with protections and everything like that so it it does matter and, yeah, but I'm, it's not going to change the the way I think about Jalen Hurts. But it, sure, come six weeks into the season, and you could be going, well, man, that that Jason Kelsey impact was was more than we factored in. They, um, they do have a good line of succession in place, though. I am not a Kellen Moore truther that believes that he's impervious and going to 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 represent a, a great improvement on the offense. We also saw the first time ever where like Jalen Hurts since his, you know, run the year before where he he showed some weakness over the back half of the year. His passer rating jumped from, uh, dropped from 99 to 75 over the back half of the year. Um his performance was not great. We just saw some more stats from Warren Sharp about um it, some potential issues with um third down completion percentage being his fault on misses. There you go. So, yeah, I mean, you should always – I think it's always a good thing in fantasy because, I mean, you got to do this with Mahomes, right? you got to do this with the best of the best. You don't just go in blind thinking every season is going to be the same as the one before. Um, players have fluctuation in their performances, coordinators, coaches, offensive line, injuries, all of this stuff. You need to go in with a fresh look, but of all the players that you could still bank on at the quarterback position, it's impossible not to put Hurts – at the tippy top of that list because of the track record, the weapons, and the fact that he's proven it over so much time and is a rushing quarterback, which is a more predictable way of scoring fantasy points. So, you know, Lamar's a good example. Mm -hmm. Like, if you just compare Jalen Hurts to Lamar Jackson, you've had some years where you're disappointed. You've had some games where you're disappointed. Yet every single time you go into a game, you know he could win you the week. And you know that him, the player, is is one of the best in the league. And yes, like Lamar's lost weapons on the outside. Lamar's dealt with injuries to his favorite weapons, offensive line issues. So yeah, it's going to be a very, very interesting season for Philly because the cruise control they were on, it finally ended. I mean, it was literally like, what, a year and a half of cruise control where like every game they just manhandle you? Yeah. Sorry, I was looking at Slack of Jurgens looking <laughs> because of what? Of Cam Jurgens is Cam. the uh, is going to slide to center uh, to replace Kelsey, and so we was Mike there. is posting pictures of Jurgens ultra healing, extra dry skin moisturizer. So this is how my brain works. I just <laughs> talked about it on the footcast. There is nothing quite like going through somewhat of a 
<laughs> just like a long oral argument about something and then like looking to your two buddies yeah. to see their thoughts and they look at you with glazed glassy yeah, eyes we weren't listening and to they you. are Weird. staring at a bottle of Jergens ultra healing ultra dry skin moisturizer. I had nothing to add you you nailed it I man. mean wow. so eloquent yeah <laughs> thanks guys just such a great job all right that'll do it hopefully you had a wonderful holiday enjoyed the Saturday episode Shout out to Cam Jurgens. <laughs> we'll be back on Tuesday with some divisional breakdowns. That man needs a sponsorship. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.